Home Affairs Minister Dr. Erin Mutualedi once again extending the deadline for the Zimbabwe exemption permit holders to apply for an alternative visa. The Helen Sussman Foundation has previously taken the minister to court to challenge that decision to end the provisional visa program. Judgment was reserved in April. We're joined now by the organization's director, Nicole Fritz. Nicole, good evening to you. Thanks for your time. What do you make of this latest decision to extend the ZDP permits? Good evening, Kathy, and good evening to the viewers. Um, we welcome the extension. Um, as you've said, uh, we have... We, um, along with several other parties, have uh, sought to challenge the termination of the Zimbabwe exemption permits. That matter was argued in April, and we are awaiting judgment, and awaiting judgment um, very anxiously because the expiry date has been looming. Um, it was slated to be the 30th of June. The extension is, I think, a deeply humane um, action on the part of the minister and the department, um, and... Uh, it means that um, individuals will, uh, you know, now don't face this kind of imminent uh, expiry. Um, so we do, we welcome it. We, we do think that it is a, it's a humane gest gesture. Nicole, when we look at the court action just more broadly that has been leveled against the termination of the, of the ZDPs, it's that, you know, there is an argument around procedure that was followed and whether enough time was actually given uh, as, by way of notice. When we have these ongoing extensions, the impact that, that will have on the court case itself, and I foresee here a situation where some of the arguments that are being made in court then become moot, especially on an issue like how much time uh, should the minister, for warning, should the minister have given uh, those permit holders? Look, you know, as I said, it, 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 it's not going to have any bearing on the, on the, on the court case itself. The arguments have, uh, you know, been made and, and the court is going to take into consideration the evidence and the arguments that were, that were um, placed before them. Um, I, you know, I'm certain that the, that the court will be made aware of this directive and, and the extension. Um, and to some extent, it takes away slightly the urgency of handing down judgment, but not much, because um, six months is still a fairly short uh, period of time within which to, you know, plan potentially for a move out of this country, um, you know, organize your financial affairs and all sorts of other arrangements that, that would come with it. Um, I don't want to take away from what I have said and what we acknowledge to be a, a humane gesture on the part of the department. But given these, these now several extensions uh, since the original decision um, was made to, uh, to terminate, um, the question is, of course, why was the original decision uh, not taken, um, allowing for consultation with the stakeholders, those at the sharp end, with, um, with notice, um, and, and not these kind of six month gaps, but, but you know, potentially a, a year or, or 18 months so that people could get their affairs in order um, and, and, and proper procedure. Um, but, but I think for today, uh, the recognition is that, is that it does give um, a lot of relief to individuals who coming the end of this month were, you know, often facing an impossible choice, um, either to become illegal or essentially to, to leave um, the homes and lives that they've known for now well over a decade. So, so the fact that the urgency of, of the matter is, is somewhat addressed by these extensions, what does that mean in terms of the longer term arguments that organizations like yourself will be making in relation to these permits? And does that mean that you could well find yourselves back in court again um, over what the potential next steps might, might be? And of course, that's of course barring whatever judgment will be handed down when it is delivered. Um. So I, you know, I can't speculate as to what the judgment will be, and we will have to make a decision once we have the judgment in, in front of us and can study it. I do want to say, though, that, you know, to some extent, um, again, recognizing the humanity of this gesture, it doesn't take away from the core arguments. And these are the core arguments that are made here and, and were made before the courts, obviously in the interest of Zimbabwe exemption permit holders, but really in the interest of all South Africans, that if you're going to make a decision of this type, which so... Um, enormously impacts upon individuals' rights, uh, where they live, uh, education for their children, um, em you know, employment opportunities, that 
you do so having engaged in proper consultation uh, with all stakeholders, but most especially um, those who are at the sharp end of that decision, who are going to bear the, the, the negative implications of that decision. And so, yes, um, to, to emphasize again, it is a humane gesture. It does offer some reprieve, but it doesn't necessarily take away from that fundamental point of ours, which is that there has to be fair and proper consultation in this case with Zimbabwean exemption permit holders, but in, in other cases where government actors are taking these types of decisions which negatively Im impact on South Africans' lives more generally, that they are consulted and that before any decision is made, the decision maker is able to take into account what that decision will mean for the people who will bear the effects of that decision. All right. Freedom uh, under laws, Nicole Fritz, thanks for your time.